My name is W, also known as Dwayne Wright, or my name is Dwayne W. Wright, also known as Just W, and I am a illustrator, painter, and curator for Art Beats and Lyrics. Most people would know me from doing illustration for hip hop culture, whether it's like designing, you know, designs for shirts, shoes, jackets, and all that. But um, primarily, I'm an illustrator at heart. And outside of that, I am a curator for a traveling art exhibition. And that requires me to be familiar with a lot of the artists that are involved in the show's work so that I can help come up with ideas to best present their work so that it enhances the experience. As a child, I was influenced by a lot of the illustrations I saw in like Mad Magazine and stuff like that. That was my entry point. And you know, comic books was there, but to me it was like comic strips and Mad Magazine. That, you know, doing caricatures. So when I got to college, that's the path I went down. And at that time, there really wasn't a concept of like hip hop or urban illustration. That really wasn't a thing that people really talked about. And even if you wanted to look for samples of it back then, there was only but like maybe a couple people even doing it. You know, you had Andre Leroy Davis at Source you know, doing the last word, that was it, you know? I didn't really see a whole lot of people doing that at the time. And once I got out of school, I had an opportunity to do some, you know, some freelance work with some underground magazines like Frank 151, and that kind of put my work out there to people because it was a little free publication people could put in their pockets. And once I did the first issue, I moved down to Atlanta and things started taking off from there. I took a class once called painting composition. You either had to take painting composition or painting. You know, all my friends were taking painting. You know, the materials and methods, this is how you use oil paint, this is how you use this. And I took painting composition. And that was the first time where somebody explained to me how a painting works. What makes it, what makes it work? And you know, outside of the technical abilities of rendering and all that, but what makes this piece work? And that became something that I latched onto. Now I understood why this masterpiece worked. You know, once you understand how something works, you can replicate that. You know, other than that, you're getting lucky. Well, I think that one of the things that differentiates me from other artists, because there's a lot of people that are on the same lane. You know, there's other, I'm not the only person that has work that, that, you know, embodies the urban aesthetic. That's not the only thing. I'm not the only guy, person out there. But I think my approach to it, my way of arranging images, the messages that I try to put in my stuff, I try to layer them, and I try to be really intentional with my compositions. You know, some people are more um, spontaneous in their stuff. I'm more strategic in putting things in places so that I can help control the viewer's eye and how they flow through a piece. You know, I like using certain color palettes that try to make the colors pop and try to feature people that normally don't get featured in work. My go-to is acrylic. You know, I'm a mixed media person, so I use acrylic and I mix that with colored pencils and stuff like that. Now, I'm not really an oil painter per se, you know. I have done oil painting, but I would not say I'm like, you know, I'm not the guy that's like, okay, I'm gonna mix all my chemical, my, my paints and mix chemicals within all that. I, that's not my area. I do dabble in watercolor. I think that's pretty fun and relaxing. But I would have to say um, my traditional setup for creating images is in acrylic. You know, I particularly like to use board or masonite. You know, I really don't, canvas I do dabble with on occasion, but if I, I, I like the, the board because it's, you know, it's more durable and it's easier to frame when it's all done. Outside of that, I'm a pen junkie. I love pens, you know. I got turned on to uh, another artist named Maurice Evans, turned me on to like Japanese food day tip pens and I became like, that became my thing. Now I'm into brush tips and all that. And I have pretty much just about everything you want to make, you know, as far as material wise. But even now I'm doing a lot of digital stuff. So that's cool. I'm getting into more digital work um, using the iPad Pro. And that's fun. That's great for illustration gigs now, especially ones where there's a lot of edits and changes. And even using it in conjunction with painting, that's really been fun. As an artist, I would say the best thing about it is the moment you get in the zone. 
some people call it flow or whatever you call it, but that moment when you get in the zone, your zone and your mind is working on all cylinders and it's moving rapidly and you're able to start executing ideas. And there's also a moment where you're creating, at least when I'm creating, and it feels like you're going up and you're trying to get to the top of it. And then there's a moment where it snaps and it comes together. And now you can really get down on your piece. And you know, that feeling of when it starts to pop, that's one of the best feelings in the world. Cause now you have it, you got it. And now you can really, really get in there and make that image do what you want it to do. Outside of art, I probably don't have any other discernible skills. <laughs> so I gotta make this work, <laughs> you know? But um, the thing that really keeps me motivated is the fact that I know I can get better and to try new things. And that, that feeling of, okay, I see this, I can tweak this and get better. You know you're really into something when you're willing to say, you know what, I want to get that 1% better. That 1%, you know, because after a while, you start where you learn something new, you jump exponentially. The more in your career you get, those increments of improvement get smaller and smaller and smaller. So now you're just getting 1% better. But if you really are about your craft and your artwork, that 1% means everything to you. I'm big on researching. You know, if I'm gonna illustrate something or draw something, I need to know enough about that subject so I can speak at it from a place of knowledge and not a place of just superficial ignorance. So if I'm gonna do a piece, I'm gonna do homework on it and I'm gonna become not like the world's leading expert on it, but enough to where, you know, somebody that is in that field realizes that the person that created this knows what they're talking about. And that part is fun. I get a lot out of that. Being able to have like good mentors, one of my mentors is Gilbert Young, you know, I show, I talk to him all the time. I send him images of my work that I'm working on. He offers his honest critiques. And that's helpful because if anything, he is very honest in his critiques, <laughs> you know? So you get good feedback and also pushes you, you know, having people around you that say, hey, you know what, this is where the thing, this is where the trend is moving now. You may want to incorporate this in your basket of tools to help, you know, stay competitive and elevate your stuff. And it's good to have that community here. And, you know, I think that is one of the best things that Atlanta has going on. I think as a curator, you should be very familiar with the stuff you're curating. You know, I have to know the artist's work well enough that I can anticipate the work they're going to bring to me. Unless, you know, they throw something out of left field, like, I'm doing sculpture now. And I'm like, no, 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 do what you're known for doing. No, this is not the time to try out new material, <laughs> you know? I got to be familiar with their work. So that means I got to look at what they have and know, okay, this artist likes to use this color palette. So when we present the work, we'll have this type of background on the wall because we don't believe in white walls. We want the walls to reflect the energy of the art in it and support it. So have to understand, okay, this artist uses splatters. This artist uses a lot of texture. And how can we complement that with the background or the environment that we create for it? And that helps because now the viewer comes up to it. They're just not seeing just the image. They're seeing a mini world created on each section. And that's how we approach curation. I'm at that point now where my voice is to speak up and show things that people don't normally see and they learn something from it. You know, outside of doing stuff for hip hop culture and, you know, showcasing, you know, you know, women and men of, you know, color and hip hop and all that, that's cool and I still will do that. But now I'm at the point where, okay, I've done that. Now I want to incorporate some information where you can actually look at a good piece, a solid piece and actually learn something from it that you may not have known before and you leave with that. I am Dwayne W. Wright, artist and curator, and this is my voice, and this is my life.